What's up, guys? Hope everyone's having a good day. Today, we'll be releasing the first week footage of um, Victory Over Obesity, where we journey with people who want to journey with us in a weight loss. And the first call was really about getting to know them, sharing a bit of our story with them. The intention of getting to know them was so that we could figure out how we could come up with an action plan together with them, considering their lifestyles, their day-to-day. -day. And for the first week participants, the action plan was pretty simple. Most of them implemented some sort of intermittent fasting because um, some wanted to take it slow. I, I did tell them to wake up slightly earlier, like half an hour or one hour before their normal waking up time. And this is the time that they'll be committing to this journey. In that one hour or half an hour, they will be not looking at their phones as they wake up. They'll be trying to remember their dreams as they wake up. They will be monitoring or observ observing their first thoughts of the day, their feelings. And they'll be trying something interesting, which is brushing their teeth with their non-dominant hand. Um, they'll be journaling. They'll be going for a run. While they're running, they're, they're going to be mindfully observing, or mindfully um, taking note of their breath going in deep breathing, going into their lungs, going into their diaphragm. Basically, I told them to just pay attention to how they feel throughout the week. Pay very close attention at the end of the day as well to how they felt that day if, when they started implementing these things in their day-to-day. -day. And the feedback was good. We're now already in week two, but I've just done putting together the week one uh, Zoom calls and... Hopefully the information that we gather at the end of this project can help anyone or everyone that is also facing similar weight loss issues. And the idea of the action plan in week one was to get them to sort of um, intimately be more aware of their habitual patterns, their automatic processes, you know, in the subconscious mind and how we tend to function in that automatic state rather than be more mindful. And a great way to go about doing that is as you wake up. In the week two, we're definitely going to ramp up the nutrition plan a little bit higher, a little bit more uncomfortable, and we'll see how it goes from there. How much weight do you want to lose? The first question. The <laughs> weight is at 77. Okay. So I'd like to, I'd like to go down until sixty-five. I don't want to be too thin. I just want to be twelve at kgs. 65. Okay. How long do you want to take to lose these twelve kgs? Twelve kg in three months. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate yourself as a habitual person? One being Sometimes you do random stuff and 10 being, um, you know, like pretty much very habitual. You're very comfortable with your day-to-day, -day, you know, pattern and stuff. Mm, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> I, would, I would rate myself. <laughs> I would rate myself at 5. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself um, as a person that likes or embraces change all good for change cool if it is for the if it is for the better i don't mind yep procrastination level one being like procrastinate 10 being like well if i really want to do it i'll just get it done you know no issue i i really dislike procrastination so i would rate myself as 10 so rate your comfort levels versus sacrifice for change so um okay like one being like I would like to take things easy at first, you know, get the feel for it. And 10 being like, well, if I'm willing to make sacrifices, if I'm willing to even suffer for something that's for the greater good or something beneficial for myself, I'll, I'll immediately sacrifice and, and hurt as much as I can to get those goals going for myself. Probably I'd go for seven. Seven? All right. Okay. Uh, here's an interesting question. Religion slash spirituality, question mark. Yes. Science, question mark, or both? I would say both. Both. Cool. 
when you face a challenge or difficulty, are you more likely to run and hide or confront? I prefer confronting it. That's awesome. Okay. For this weight loss journey or this goal that you want to achieve in your day to day, how much would you, uh, are you willing to spend? How much time? I would say two hours inclusive of meal prep. Two hours inclusive of meal prep. That's awesome. Yeah. And do you cook daily? Yes. Most of the days. Oh, okay. All right. Now we'll get back to quest. Uh, we'll get to the last question for this part. Um, why do you want to lose weight? Mm, firstly, I would like to be an example to my children. I'm already forty six, uh, single parent. So um, it's good to be an example uh, when you, you know when you go surf in church. People look at you in awe. Oh, it feels good. It feels good. That's amazing. Amazing hey, answer. <laughs> Yeah, all right. You want to crush it, right? Yeah. You just want to crush it. Yeah, from all yes. aspects. Exactly. Amazing. Yes. Okay, so you are not working anymore. You can lose this yep. 12 kg in three months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because um, from our perspective and also like what I would like to recommend is you give yourself the time of the day to focus on this weight loss before your day starts. You get what I mean? Like, people tend to tell themselves that I don't have the time in the day to do this, to do that. But, you know, like, there's always a misconception that you have to go to the gym for an hour and a half or you have to do this or you have to do that. But I think it's, uh, well, it's not that I think it's different. It's, it's just that I've discovered a way for ourselves to implement certain things that facilitate and you know um, improve this weight loss experience from many aspects are you ready to start tomorrow sure why not awesome first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set your alarm for 5 a.m okay okay mm -hmm. all right you have a journal Yes. Perfect. Oh, man, you're so going to lose something. <laughs> I'm just so excited. All right. Um, when you wake up, you're not going to touch your phone for the first one and a half hours. You're just going to leave it there. Okay. Okay? Okay. So now you have 5 to 6.30 without your phone. When you wake up, I want you to try to be observant of what's your first thought. Okay. All right, just be observant of what's your first thought. Uh, uh, the second thing, all right? Uh, so keep that in mind. Once you identify what's your first thought, write it down, okay? Uh, you can bring your journal, since you don't have your phone, you can bring your journal to your toilet with you. Uh, and, and as you freshen up and everything. Um, I want you to try and remember your dream from the night before. Okay. This will be a challenge initially uh, because we tend not to remember our dreams after a certain amount of like the deep REM sleep. But if we try to induce or be observant of uh, this part like the first thing we wake up before we introduce any form of stimuli or distraction, we, we tend to form that memory connection slightly better. Mm. When you brush your teeth, you're going to use your non-dominant hand. Left hand. Right. The first time is going to be a struggle. My first time, I was so irritated. I wanted to just switch hands. In fact, I did. My first time, I switched hands because it was like, this is such a waste of time. But see it through, you know. Uh, second okay. day, it gets easier. Third day, it gets even easier. Okay? Go for a run. Drink your water, of course. Go for a run. Be very aware of your breath when you're running. Just form that um, sense of taking in deep breath into your diaphragm, into your 
lungs, just feel your body with that 5.30 a.m. air, you know, as much as you can mm. when you're running. Steady, but deep breathing, right? I think we'll start um, with an intermittent fasting first. We don't want to go so hardcore. Uh, since you're used... Okay, so you said that you cut down on carbs, right? Um, so you're used to like having less rice, less biscuits, less cakes, yes. less breads anyway. You maintain doing that. Yes. You maintain doing that. But now no, 100% no cheat day. 100% no uh, <laughs> cakes and you know, uh, <laughs> all those things. Just keep it okay. simple. <laughs> keep it, remember, remind yourself why. You want to be that change. You want to be that example. You have a plan, you want to hit that. Because like, if I were to recommend you to do something like keto, which is quite extreme, and you only want to lose 20, uh, 12 mm. kgs, for me, I want to lose 50, you know? I lost 40, I still want to lose another 10. Mm. And so I, I took on a much more um, drastic diet plan or nutrition plan. But for yourself, I think, you know, like you want something more sustainable, don't put your body into a sh complete shift. But Stay away from yeah. the ice, stay away from the bread, stay away from the ice cream. I have so many recommendations. I know low carb ice cream, where you can get low carb ice cream, low carb um, cookies, you know, like whatever. Just if, 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 if you want to know where to get those, I'll just let you know, you know, like uh, uh, where are the good values for all this kind of stuff, you know, because it can be so painful when you're off sugar, like how I am off sugar for the past one and a half years. So sometimes we do indulge in like the... Wow. Yes, uh, off completely. So we do <laughs> indulge in like stuff that's sweetened with monk fruit sweetener or stevia. You know, the, sometimes the Coke Zero every now and then. You know, just to keep ourselves sane, right? But but yeah, um, the palate will change when you're like off carbs and off sugar for a while. So... I think we'll just do like the how you are doing, but we'll introduce intermittent fasting. So what we want to ideally get to is to a 16-hour fasting period and an 8-hour eating window. Okay. Okay. In that fasting period of 16 hours, you're only allowed to drink water, black coffee, black tea, green tea, Chinese tea. Um... <clears throat> this fasting thing does something, you know, to your body. You can look it up. I encourage you all these concepts, all these things that I'm talking about, you know, from the breath work to the fasting, to the uh, developing a morning routine, uh, to the high intensity when, when your workout and everything. There's all signs behind it. And if you want to, you can go ahead and look it up on your own. And we encourage that so much, you know. But I'm just okay. uh, coming up with this so that, you know, uh, we mm -hmm. can see how... Okay, so back to the intermittent fasting. Um, clear? 16-hour eating window? Eight, I mean, sorry, 8-hour eating window, 16-hour fast? Hmm. Yes. You can start with like a 14-hour fast just to see if it's going to be too hurtful. But you told me you're willing to go 7 when it comes to sacrificing you know, and suffering. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think... I think that pretty much covers like the first one. It has been so smooth. I'm so, I'm so happy because like, I think you're going to do this, you know. I think you're going to get this done. Easy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in the meantime, until I think, okay, I'll tell you what, you have my number. If there's anything okay. challenging along the way, if there's after three days, you know, you feel... Oh, uh, this fasting thing, or uh, you know, I think you're gonna love the morning routine, and I think you're gonna you're gonna feel amazing. Uh, but maybe the fasting might get in the way. Um, just text me. Just let us know. You know, if we can be there for you in in whatever way, we'll we'll, we'll tell you. You know, uh, um, and also, when you break the fast, that first meal, try to have something like two half boiled eggs, or uh, don't go crazy at the opening meal, you know, you want to have, mm. uh, yeah, 
you don't want to have a GI spike or a crash after the opening meal. And you don't want to shock your body after 18 hours. Uh, so we do 18 hours now, 16 hour fasting. You, 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 you sort of introduce some food first and then like you can either have two small meals and then one closing meal that's larger. Or you can have like one medium size, small to medium size plus another larger, slightly larger one at the closing because it might, uh, you might get very hungry. Towards the end of your fast. Justin, but what, what is the best what is the best 16 hour uh, time frame that you go? I mean, from what time to what time? For me now, what we're doing is 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. We we're going for 18 hours fasting window, six hour eating window. Oh, six hours eating window. So meaning yours is 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yes. But you so know mine should be Maybe 10 a.m. So mine should be 10 a.m. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What time do you normally sleep? Since you're waking up at 5, you should be sleeping 9, 10? Yeah, 9, 30, okay. 10, I'll go to bed. That's okay. Mm. Sometimes if you go to bed early, I mean late, sorry, some people will be severely facing hunger before they sleep, you know, because let's say they stop eating at 6 p.m. Mm. Yeah, then that might be an issue. Mm. Okay, that sounds amazing. How much weight do you want to lose? I want to lose at least 15, 15 kg. 15 kg, yeah? One five, yeah. Um, how long do you want to take to lose this 15 kg? <laughs> um, I'm not in a rush, so it can gradually, I'm okay with it. Gradually, lah. okay, all right. Yeah, maybe about six months. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself as a habitual person? 7. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how welcoming are you towards change? 1 being um, no, not welcoming at all, and 10 being, yeah, sure, I'll embrace change anytime. Uh... I think I'm, I'm very welcome to change. So I will give a nine. A nine. Perfect. How would you rate your procrastination level? One being, I really, really procrastinate. And 10 being, well, if I really want something to, to happen for myself, I'll get it done. It actually depends. Six. Six. Okay. Rate your comfort levels versus sacrifice for change. So what I mean in this question is like, you know, um, are you the type of person that is willing to step outside your comfort zone or would you rather take things easy and slowly uh, and see how that goes? Or are you willing to like, okay, I'm willing to suffer for, for something that, you know, that will bring about uh, big changes. Slow and easy. Interesting one. Um, religion slash spirituality, question mark. Science, question mark, or both? Science. Science, okay. When you face a challenge or difficulty, are you more likely to run and hide or to confront it? I will confront it. How much time in your day-to-day Right. Are you willing to put aside or set aside for this weight loss journey to lose these 15 kgs that you want to lose in a okay. day? I would start with an hour first. I want to tell myself I give two, three hours and then I never stick to it. So comfortably, one hour. Why do you want to lose weight? Uh... I think it's more for myself. I mean, it's just for myself. I just want to illustrate. I've been struggling with this weight loss for many years. All right. I hear you. Yes, it's for yourself. But is there any other motivation? Is it to be healthier? or uh... Maybe for health-wise? Okay. Mm, yes. I, <laughs> it's just that sometimes I just give up halfway. When things just don't work. 
Okay. Okay. And then work and all that. So I just mm. couldn't keep it up. Right. Okay. Uh, what about diet plans previously when you tried? How, what did you, you know, put yourself through in terms of diet plans? And uh, was it just calorie restriction or did you try anything else? Not really. I just tried to eat less. Mm -hmm. um, tried to cut uh, meals. Mm -hmm. That's why it didn't stick on, yeah. Right, yeah. We, we used to struggle with this all the time too. Like, you know, when we found a little bit of motivation to eat less or smaller portions, you know. Then, like, let's say you have a bad day, you know, you just want to eat. It becomes a struggle to fall, get back into that momentum. So I totally know. And in our experience, we've come across this type of uh, road bumps and patterns. When you wake up, when I want you to try to be observant of what your first thought is. Uh, you can write down what your first thought is. I want you to try to also remember your dream. Try to do, just try to re recall your dream in that first few minutes of, of, of your uh, being awake. Okay. All right. You're going to be brushing your teeth. You're going to try brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, use your left hand. Okay, head on outside uh, in the morning, like, like once you've had your coffee and everything. Uh, like what I do sometimes when I just go out for a run is I go to the end of the road and then I just run up the street past 10 houses. Okay, and then I turn around and I walk back down and I just do this five times if I'm really pressing for time. And since we're talking about just forming small habits first, you know, um, because we're going to gradually do this with you, right, Regina? Uh, so you just do five times as well. Just run up, walk down, run up, walk down. Okay? I have an issue with that. Okay. Please elaborate. Okay, what issue is there's so many stray dogs at my area. There's no way I can run or walk out of my house. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I have a treadmill. I can use that. Oh, okay. okay. Amazing. I mean, you have a treadmill. The... Okay, yes. Go ahead and do that. You know, um, Use your treadmill and just do like a 20 second run, 40 second walk, you know? Okay. Yeah, and if you do that five times, that's just five minutes, you know? Okay. But as you're doing this, be very conscious of okay. your breathing. Try to take in, you know, the morning air, you know, if you can open up your house, you know, while you're having your coffee, get in that morning air, that oxygen, you know, be aware of your breath, take it into your diaphragm, into your lungs, deep breathing as you run and as you walk, you know, just, just be conscious of it, take in all that air. Just be very conscious and mindful about what you are grat grateful for what you are thankful for, all these little beautiful things in your life, like your daughter, you know, your family. Uh, just, just remind yourself about these beautiful things that, you know, give you a sense of uh, joy and peace and comfort, you know, no matter whatever the world throws at you. Uh, and thank. Thank in your prayer, you know. Thank out loud, you know, for, for, for these things that come, come into your life, you know. Right? Yeah. Sounds super simple. Yeah. Um, okay. So now let's move on. That's your morning routine. I've already, uh, that's pretty simple and straightforward. Mm. And we've got that down. Um, mm. Now let's talk about, like, let's say if you start fasting. Mm. Um, 
you want to get to a 16-hour fast and an 8-hour eating window. It sounds like you're probably going to have your coffee and then you're going to go lunch 12 p.m. and then dinner 7 p.m. So your eating window will be about 12 to 8 p.m. And I think that's kind of suits your current lifestyle or, you know, without making too much uh, changes okay. there. Okay. Sounds good, yeah. Regina. I'm excited. <laughs> Sure. Yeah? Ooh. The Wi-Fi. Look into that so I can see you clearer and you're not like um, laggy and we can, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi. The next time, hopefully, that's better. Yeah. Maybe we'll do the next call. Uh -huh. The next time, we'll do it from my office. It's much more better. Okay. All right. Yeah. Regina, have an amazing day. You know, take care. Mm. Anything, let us know. Yes, I'm so sorry about the connection. No problem. Yeah. Take care. How much weight do you want to lose? I, so when we used to know each other, I used to weigh like 80. I'd yeah. like to go back to that. So that I'm currently 110. So that's about 30 kilos. Oh, really? Yeah. This real fast. How long do you want to take to lose this? Um, I'm happy to, like, I know it, it, the sustainable way to do it would be over a longer period of time. And as right. I said, I've, like, the, I have the year, you know, I have 2021 and then oh. maybe beyond that. So maybe a year plus. Right? I, took, I took a year to lose 40. So a year to lose 40 yeah. is definitely... Now, I completely understand, like, why that's important, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself as a habitual person? On a scale of 1 to 10... That's a very hard question for me to answer because I'm very habitual about some things. Five, I guess. Like okay. I'm right in the, the middle. This of is fine because it's, it's, yeah. it's validated by the fact that you're more calculative and instead of like just either habitual or random, mm. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five's good. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how do you rate yourself like in embracing change? As in one, you don't like change at all, and ten, yeah. If 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 something were to change, but you know you you've thought about it and you're okay with it, you would embrace it. I think this one, I would give myself a solid like nine or a 10. Right. Cool. I am very, very adaptable awesome. and very embracing of change. Go for good or for bad, <laughs> but um, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, rate your procrastination level. One being like, you always procrastinate. Oh. Yeah. And 10 being like, no, you know. Like, I've gotten better, but I would say like three. three. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said like, maybe I, maybe I would have said, when I used to work in banking, I would have said right. like one. I used to take like 10 smoke breaks before lunchtime. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, rate your comfort levels, right? Versus sacrifice for change. So what I mean here is like, are you, are you the kind of person that would rather take things slowly and easy and see how you ease into it? Or if it's like, fuck it, let's go, you know? Like, like if you're ready to go about it, I'll suffer for this. I'll, I don't mind, you know, like getting it done, suffering as much as I can in order to get the results that I want. It really depends on how badly I want it, you know? Yeah. So, so I would say that like, if I want that change to happen pretty, and because I'm so embracing of change, and if I want it to happen bad enough, I think... What, what, what was the higher scale? Like seven? seven? No, I mean, this is just, uh, th there's, there's no uh, one to 10 here. It's more like, yeah, I would, I would sacrifice for change or I would, I would definitely, I would definitely sacrifice my comfort for change if mm -hmm. I, that change is something that I desire. Religion slash spirituality, science or both? Oh, only science. Only science. Only science. All right. Um, when you face a challenge or difficulty, do you run and hide or do you confront it? I think I run away. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm to be very honest. <laughs> what really brought about this huge change was one day me and my wife, we went to see um, an insurance agent and we wanted a medical card, right? And she just asked, what's your weight? And we're like, oh, okay, I'm 130 kilos. Nope, we're just not gonna, we're just not gonna give you the medical card at that weight. You know, and then it just clicked. Dude, like intellectually, if 
if the numbers are against you when an insurance you know company is not willing to take your money and like yeah. my, dad, my dad died of a heart attack but he had diabetes you know my grandmother right. my mom's side has diabetes i just knew like hey you know that was that was just a wake up call for us you know like uh yeah there's yeah. something similar for me this time around because i know that like my lifestyle currently is not sustainable and i'm basically slowly killing myself <laughs> you know essentially basically if we were just going to stick to hard science here um we function a lot of the time based on our subconscious programming right like mm-hmm. our subconscious minds you know 0 to 7 there's a lot of programming done at that age right if we if we yeah, think yeah. about it that way right and mm-hmm. our autopilot mode is meant to help us in a way where it's supposed to help us do things easier but if we are unconscious of certain certain you can also you know like um take over and if we are not mindful of how that works or if we are not mindful of certain things then we just like function very very much in autopilot mode like like you know but i'm sure that you have some sense of recognition of all that and 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 so the idea here is like trying to be mindful yeah. that that happens and trying to get in between and the idea of the neurobics and like later we're going to talk a bit about breath work and all this is not from a very um spiritual point of view but more like bridging senses in our brain right mm. and and what happens when that when when we start training our mind or our brain to do that you know like it opens up um a different way we function and perceive stuff right, right. and that's why i ultimately want to have um or introduce people to experience you know and and because it, it brings about like so much quality you know in terms yeah. of clarity and quality so yeah yeah i can definitely get behind that i i agree with that as well um yeah I, I, you know what like actually you kind of like hit the nail in the coffin there right i feel like one of my biggest problems is that and i i, I am such a calculated person in life because of all, every single job or vocation that i've ever had has been numbers and calculation like my even favorite pastime is poker you know and right. then like i trade for a living like it's kind of like yeah like my mind is probably not in the best place like it could definitely be better like you know for example my girlfriend all this like i for example lately one of the things that has gotten really bad and yeah. and this is another reason why i want to do this right when yeah. i used to be skinnier I, yeah. i used to not get mad right i was always not get angry like my girlfriend tells me this right like she'll be screaming at me i'll be laughing there sitting in the back but now since i've gotten fat i have very little control over my anger now i lash out a lot easier ah okay okay you know? okay and and there's a lot of other things which like you know when i get angry i reach a point where i get like so mad that like i know this is not good for my mental health you know like mental health issues are like a real thing and like i might even be like borderlining on that and i feel like that's attached to my weight gain in a way i feel i mean because like the only thing that has changed in the last two years for me is the fact that i've got in that fat nothing much has uh changed in in terms of like what's going on with my life and stuff so definitely would think that like i i think i need to have like you know some like i think that you're going through a weight loss once again is definitely going to bring my mind in the right place and it's going to make my mind healthier perfect. as well perfect perfect so, so so um yeah. instead of doing this the the, the standard victory over obesity way yeah. we're going to do it differently with you right mm-hmm. i'm going to send start sending you what i spent my time researching on right okay you go ahead because you have all the time in the world and mm. however you want to intellectualize all this data like man do you want to go down rabbit holes like go ahead you know like um yeah that's what i typically do you know fuck this uh, <laughs> all night long anyway, yeah so also yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. i'm really excited and what what we can do is like with you um like with them i'm going to follow up like changes like like how they feel over the first week the second week you know but with you we'll straight straight go into like the implementations of like what you are figuring out you know like what you've gone through like what resonates with you what doesn't you know and we'll we'll we'll, we'll do that differently with you yeah okay sure i mean i'm down for it yeah for sure to be considerate of um all that you go through and everything surrounding your your experiences in your daily life and everything so from mm-hmm. there 
right? Uh, then we come up with or we suggest you know ways to 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 go about it. But when when we start talking about the action plan, it it will be good to have something where you can write down like uh yeah, just a notebook will do. Time to finish cooking by then. Okay. 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 Thank okay, okay. you. No problem. Um. Uh, you do you work from home or do you have a like go to work at an office? Okay. Um. At this moment, I'm actually okay. serving my. Um, and after this, I'm actually gonna do property. All right. Okay. So it's more of a very flexible. More, I I would say more of work from home unless there's appointments. Okay. How much weight do you want to lose? Uh, ideally around twenty kilos. All right. My I'm I'm actually twenty one kilos away from. My ideal weight. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's the last I checked. Okay. Which was a month and a half ago. And how long would you want to take to lose this? Uh, I would say a very. I would. I would prefer a very realistic goal. Yeah. So. Uh. I don't know how long does it take to, to lose twenty <laughs> one. It, it depends. Uh, it took me a year to lose forty, and uh, right. I've come. Yeah, I've come across uh people who have lost more in a span of a year. I've come across mm-hmm. people who um lost less in a span of a year. So I I, w- I would say it really depends, like, You know, on uh, on, on how I would I would say roughly about eight months to a year to lose that twenty kilos. A scale of one to ten. How would you rate yourself as a habitual person? Difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I think I'm very much um, habitual in my day to day because right. um, it's like okay, every day at seven fifteen I wake up, whether Oreo mm-hmm. knocks on the door or not, you cool. know. Mm-hmm. But on certain days, I just feel like sleeping in. So I will give myself an eight actually. Yourself. All right. Um, how would you rate yourself as a person who likes changes? Very suitable question for this moment in time. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just had a very long conversation of about change with my husband last night, like right. career and things like that. You know. Um. Yeah, and uh, I I don't mind change. Cool. Okay, I I'm open to changes. Right. Is that sometimes I get afraid of them. All right. Especially if I have failed before. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, okay. It makes a lot of sense, of course. Yeah. So on a scale of one to ten, how much do I like changes? Uh, that's gonna be a little bit lesser than earlier, so it's seven point five. How mm-hmm. much in regards to something like procrastination, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. One being um, yeah, I procrastinate, and ten being like nah, you know, if I want something done, I'll get on it. In general, it depends on how bad I want that thing, and it depends on what. So how much I procrastinate? Not much not, actually. Not much. So maybe like seven out of ten, like towards a not procrastinating. I think I go more of like eight. On mm-hmm. a scale of one to ten, how would you rate comfort levels versus sacrifice for change? So like one being like uh, I rather take things easy, you know, even if the changes are not so drastic. Or, and 10 being like, well, I'll go all in, you know, like for for whatever I want, you know, that like I don't mind suffering and making making huge changes for the for the desired result. Uh, nine for that. Right. So if you really you don't mind making sacrifices in order to get something you really want done. I think it has become habitual. Right. Okay. When you face a challenge or difficulty, mm-hmm. run and hide or confront? 
Ooh, this is my husband's favorite question. <laughs> he always says never run and hide. Always face difficulties or challenges head on. And do you embody this in your? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Mm. How much time a day mm -hmm. are you willing to commit to this weight loss journey? Maximum time. Two hours. Two. Why do you want to lose weight? Health. We live a bit longer and for a baby. Okay. Sorry. No worries. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's, you just <laughs> do what you need. To, it, by the way, it's raining heavily, so just be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Drive safe. Yeah. All right, that, that about sums up the first call. We're really thrilled and looking forward to the progress of week two. If anyone still is looking to journey with us in Victory Over Obesity, please reach out. Uh, it's totally free. We still are keeping the intake open for anyone who wishes to join us in this uh, project, but it will eventually stop once we're deep into it, you know, so that um, we'll really focus in cultivating the group dynamic where where we have group calls instead and we have support for one another. From that point on, uh, whatever observations that we make, whatever um, challenges that we face, we will document and hopefully that can bring about some sort of information for anyone that is looking to lose weight as well. Take care guys. <laughs>